everybody welcome back to my channel <laughs> welcome back to another video if you guys saw my last video I told you I would have a lot more videos out this week but as you can see I've been a little occupied <laughs> and that's because we got this little kitten you guys meet beans well I've been calling him beans my boyfriend's been calling him like two different names so we're not really sure on his name yet but He's this little sweet eight week old kitten and he's just adorable. I love him so much. Say hi to the channel. Say hi. So adorable. Anyway, for today's nails, I'm gonna be doing a nail haul. I don't know about you guys, but I love myself a good nail haul. And we're gonna be sticking to primarily acrylics today. I think I'm also gonna be talking about a true crime case on top of the nail haul. Um, I'm just gonna see how it goes. Like to chit chat, hang out with me, see all of the acrylics, all of the goodies I got, and listen to a true crime case, then please keep watching. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing a couple unboxing and some swatches for you guys today. I'm now a brand ambassador for Blissful Cream Nails and this was such a fun brand ambassador package to unbox. Um, her packaging is on point. Her products are so much fun. So if you guys like anything, be sure to head over onto her website, use my code SBJ10 for 10% off. And like always, I'll have everything linked in the description. So if you like anything I show you guys, um, all the links, all the coupon codes, everything will be in the, in the description below. So I'm gonna be talking about a true crime case today. Today's case is an unsolved case. It's very strange. There's not a ton of info from the police, but apparently a lot of people think that police will be able to solve this case sometime this year. So when I heard that, I was like, this is a perfect case to talk about right now. So we're going to be talking about a missing persons case regarding missing teenager, 16 year old Carly Gousset. And she was living in Chalfont, California at the time of her disappearance. Chalfont is a very rural town, not a lot goes on there. It's a small community located in Mono County near the Nevada border. It's mainly surrounded by nature, being not far from Death Valley National Park. The census report from 2019 reported that only a thousand people were living in Chalfont that year. So as you can guess, it's a very tight-knit community. Everybody knows, each everybody knows each other type of thing. Sorry guys, I talk really fast. <laughs> I'm trying to slow down. Um, Carly lived with her stepmom, Melissa Guse, who you're gonna be hearing a lot in this video, as well as her dad, Zachary Guse, along with her two little brothers as well, ages nine and 10. Her stepmom, Melissa, worked at an escrow company and Carly actually had a part-time job there as well, working as a personal assistant for her stepmom. Carly's biological mom's name is Lindsay Farley, 39 years old, and sources tell us that Carly and her mom were like best friends. They were extremely close. They lived, or Lindsay lived just over the border in Nevada, not far from where Carly was living. So they were able to visit each other all the time. Carly's mom and dad divorced when she was just two years old and she initially lived with her mom, but then moved in with her stepmom and dad when she was around 10 years old. Carly's family and friends described her as being a typical 16 year old teenage girl. Carly loved to dance, hang out with her boyfriend, and his name was 17-year-old Donald R. R. Ward III. And of course, she also loved to make money at her after-school job, where I mentioned to you guys earlier, she was an assistant for her stepmom. And overall, Carly was just a happy teenager and a great family. She had a great family and a really close circle of friends. She was considered by those around her to be well-liked and popular as well. So this story starts on the evening of October 12th, 2018. After school ended on Friday that day, Carly told her stepmom, Melissa, that she was going to a high school football game with friends. However, Carly and her friends never actually went to the game that night. Instead, they decide to attend a small house party. Carly meets with her boyfriend at the party and they start socializing with friends. At one point during the evening, Carly decides to smoke on a joint that was being passed around that supposedly contained marijuana. 
However, for whatever reason, Carly ended up having an intensely bad reaction to whatever she consumed. She became fearful and highly paranoid and suddenly started to panic and she ran out of the back door of the party into the middle of the street. She got scared of the music, her boyfriend Donald Arwood said. She got scared of me. At around 8 p.m., Carly used her cell phone to call her stepmom. According to Melissa, Carly was frantic and wanted her to pick her up from the party. When Melissa got to the party, she was surprised to see Carly running down the street at full speed, holding her cell phone flashlight out in front of her. She was extremely paranoid and disoriented to the point where when her mom got there to pick her up, she jumped in the back seat of the car behind um, her mom driving instead of going around to get into the front seat like most adults do, you know? Her stepmom commented that when Carly got into the car, she was really pale and that she looked like a ghost and that her pupils were really dilated. Carly began apologizing to Melissa for not going to the football game as as promised. She admitted that her and her friends had smoked weed at the party instead. Also, this wouldn't have been Carly's first time smoking either. Earlier in the year, for some unknown reason, Carly started showing up to class high on marijuana and her grades plummeted. Concerned, Zach and Melissa confronted Carly and told her she had to get her act together. After that, her grades improved and she was getting better, her dad Zach said. But unfortunately, it was short-lived. When, so when Melissa brought Carly home on the night of October 12th after the party, her father could see that something was wrong. She was scared of something, he said. He tried talking to his daughter, but to no avail. Carly started to hallucinate, and her dad agreed that whatever Carly smoked must have been laced with something due to her behavior, and the family thought it might have been LSD. According to Melissa, Carly said she was going to bed and asked her stepmom to stay with her. But the agitated teen couldn't sleep. She wanted to paint toenails, Melissa recalled. She wanted to read the Bible. Um, Watching the out of control Carly, Melissa decided to make it a learning lesson and she started to record a video of Carly on her cell phone. Melissa wanted to play it back to Carly and show her what kind of effect the drugs had on her the next day. Melissa Melissa recorded Carly for eight minutes, but police have not released the recording to the public. Um, Just a transcript of the recording has been released, which I'll read some of that to you guys now. So during the recording, Carly says, I really messed up today. Melissa consoled Carly saying, we all do things in life that we regret, drugs especially. And upset Carly then told Melissa, I love you. And after that, Melissa wanted to get some food into Carly thinking it might help sober her up. So she goes downstairs to make Carly a salad, which like a salad out of all things is just the weirdest thing to give to like a teen that's tripping out. But anyway, so she comes back upstairs with a salad and she goes up to Carly. And I guess Carly like starts, takes a bite and spits it out and like yells, that's the devil's lettuce. And it's so funny because, well, it's not funny, but every single report, every single video I've watched, they all, like, have to mention that part, like, the devil's lettuce part. Like, I don't even know why, but anyway, so Melissa consoled Carly and suggested she get some sleep, but Carly was having none of it. No, I don't want to sleep. You're going to kill me. Melissa said, why would I kill you? That's preposterous. The The agitated teen replied i'm just thinking of i'm just thinking of all this demonic stuff she she cried i can't help it she then tells melissa to call her bio mom to for help and then melissa asks if anything oh no no and then carly asks melissa if anything happens to me will you call 911 and melissa responds nothing bad's going to happen to you Melissa puts on movies while the two lay in bed. Melissa said Carly was texting her friends and her boyfriend. Once sometime later that evening, Melissa fell asleep in Carly's bed next to her to ensure she was okay. So this is when things start to get a little bit weird because Melissa, the stepmom, her story starts to change about what happens next. So initially, Melissa said she woke up at around... 5.45 in the morning of October 13th and did what she normally did at that hour. Opened her kids' doors and said good morning. She said she checked in on Carly and she was sound asleep in her bed still. Melissa then went back to sleep and woke up again sometime between 7.15 a.m. and 7.30 a.m. 
she walked into her her stepdaughter's room to see how she was feeling and that time carly was gone melissa checked the house for her and nothing when melissa went back into the bedroom to tell her husband that their daughter was not there he seemed puzzled puzzled and asked what she meant melissa said she's gone she's not in her room she's not outside she's not in the backyard she's not anywhere the pair thought carly maybe went for a walk they got into their cars and drove around town to find her there was zach said no cause for alarm they thought they'd find her walking down the road but after two hours of searching the terrains and desert and all the nearby neighborhoods they became increasingly concerned for her safety because they couldn't find her Melissa and Zach returned home at around 9.30 a.m. and called Carly's birth mom to tell her that her daughter was missing. Zach then called the Mono County Sheriff's Office and filed a missing persons report. Deputies then arrived at their home a few hours later and began talking to neighbors to see if they'd seen anything. They had scent dogs out covering the vast desert and large terrains. They deployed a helicopter with infrared light to help in finding Carly. They had hundreds of people in the search parties looking everywhere for this girl. Authorities conducted a week-long search for the missing teen, but came up empty-handed. The, the biggest clue in this case is that there's no clue, Sergeant Seth Clark said. We think Carly may still be out there. Days later, Melissa's recollection of that night changed drastically. In the second version of events, Melissa never left Carly's side. When she woke up at 5.45 a.m., she saw Carly asleep in the bed next to her. Instead of going through her usual routine of checking in on her kids, she fell back asleep in Carly's bed. She woke up sometime between 7.15 a.m. and 7.30 a.m. and noticed Carly was gone. When asked about the startling inconsistencies in her narrative, Melissa said she had been stricken with grief and worry. Those emotions, it seems, made her misremember what happened that fateful morning. Melissa brushed off any criticism of her changing storyline and has stressed that all she wants is for Carly to come home. And at this at this same time that this was all happening, Melissa was also like Facebook living all of these events. So that was also kind of strange too. But what happened in the house that morning is open for debate. What isn't though is that three witnesses saw Carly on Ponderosa Street that morning near White Mountain Estate Road in Chalfant. Three witnesses came forward to say they saw Carly in the early morning hours of October 13th. Richard Eddy, 78, is a retired Los Angeles County Sheriff Department employee who lives on the street from the Gusset family. Between 6.30 and 6.45 a.m., Eddy was sipping coffee and relaxing in his jacuzzi. He looked out the window of the enclosed room and saw a tall, slender female with long hair walk by. She was looking up. She was looking around at the sky, he said. Two other witnesses would tell the Mono County Sheriff's Office that they saw Carly that morning near Ma White Mountain Estate Road and Highway 6. Combine the witnesses' sightings make up of the only solid lead police have. And this leads us to the possibilities of what could have happened to Carly Guse. Did Carly run away and hitchhike her way across America? Was she abducted? Did she get lost in the surrounding mountains? While police were conducting initial reviews, Carly's mom, Lindsay, was on the road driving in from Nevada. I arrived nine hours after she had gone missing, Farley said. Of course, I was in shambles. I couldn't stop shaking. Lindsay believes that Melissa and Zach had something more to do with her daughter's disappearance than what they're leading on, and she's made that very evident. The family has appeared on the Dr. Phil show, a ton of news outlets, Dateline, and she's just doing what any mother would do and try to seek justice for her child and try to find out what the heck happened. I mean, her daughter was only 16 years old when she disappeared. And um, so Zach, the dad, believes that Carly, well, given her recent troubles and the circumstances, that it's possible that she ran away. Maybe there's things she kept from us. Who knows? That's what the dad thinks. Or is there a serial killer at work? There's also speculation that Carly's disappearance could be linked to the case of missing teen Madeline Lingenfeller, 19 years old. She parked her car along Mount Rose Highway, Mount Rose Highway near Reno on September 19th, 2020, but hasn't been seen since. 
so what do you guys think i honestly don't know i wish police would release the entire video from that night melissa took or i mean like the vid video that melissa took of carly that night so we could get a better understanding of what kind of like state she was in and her text messages if there was any surveillance from nearby neighbors some people think that Carly uh, may, ha may have had an overdose and that the mom and dad got scared and hit her body, but that literally makes no sense to me. Like, these parents, I just don't see, like, they did nothing wrong. She was at a party. Like, if any your kid's at home and they're having an overdose, I mean, you would just call the ambulance if something happened, you know? The mom was a little, I mean, the stepmom was a little bit su suspicious, um, but again, it, nothing so far that makes me believe it was the mom yeah her story changed a little bit but like if you do something every single day the exact same thing every day it, that's probably just going to be in your mind that you did that you know i just don't understand how they would be able to hide her body with absolutely no evidence whatsoever i think that she wandered off into the desert i think that she was like miscombobulated and you know paranoid whatever under distress ended up just like being on drugs and wandering because where they live is like like i said it's like vast vast desert there's terrains there's miles of desert it's literally like an hour from nevada it's not like city population it's like rural desert so you know or she was walking and someone picked her like someone picked her up and then just like took her forever but I personally don't think don't think that the family was involved. It just doesn't make sense how the family would be able to get away with it. And for what? There's like no motive either, you know? Um, it's just really, really weird and sad. So apparently police think that they know they're going to solve it soon. Like ASAP. Like in a couple, like in a month. So I'm really curious to see what's, what's, what's happened. What kind of evidence they have in on this. Literally like this girl went to a party, smoked something that was probably laced, went home, was tripping, had her mom try to calm her down, wasn't working, they went to sleep, and she just got up and wandered off. And especially if that was her first time on like LSD or something like that, that kind of drug like lasts for a very long time, like 11 12 13 hours you know so she totally could have been in that state of mind that early in the morning and then also some of the witnesses or some people think that the witnesses were actually they actually saw the mom walking around the neighborhood that morning looking for carly and then it wasn't actually her like walking around um so who knows but i'll let you guys know what i know when i find out it's very interesting very crazy it just breaks my heart to know that a child is just like missing you know like how does how does someone just wander off into thin air just oh it's crazy so yeah that's my true crime story for today i hope that you guys enjoyed it i hope that you enjoyed all of these swatches so much fun i love acrylics i know you guys want to see me do some like acrylic nails like on tips and stuff but i'm just not confident yet like i've tried it many times like a little bit here and there and <laughs> what sentence was that i've tried it many times a little bit here and there what i've tried it and i'm just not good at it yet i need help like i need a teacher or something i don't know the lazy girl method works good with me for me with acrylics <laughs> and mixing that mixing them with poly gel i don't know i'm trying i'm gonna get good at it guys just wait and these powders from candace they are smooth like butter no literally all the products i showed today i recommend everything 100 percent i use candy acrylics monomer with all three well these blissful cream and of course her own um, powders and it worked flawlessly these powders were were more um medium to slow setting um the blissful cream nail was medium setting and then the can acrylics are more of a fast setting so just to keep in mind if your little hearts care about that or not but yeah anyway i am gonna get going because i have a lot to do tonight still um makar is dropping a collection tonight i guess midnight um so i need to get that video done bust that out but 
Yep, I love you guys. And let's give my channel members a shout out really quick. Faye Peters, Danielle Monnet, Bucket List, Shelly Bateman, Michelle Mish, Jennifer Landris, Kimberly Cannon, Maria's Nell Journey, Kylie McGee, Crystal Colton, Enrique's Family Goods, Nicole Boyer, Kaylin Nails, China Fierce B, Michelle Foy, Penny Vestina, Nailed by Sabre G Griffin, Katie Lunn, and Candace Joyner. I love you girls so much. Thank you guys for everything. And I'll see you guys tonight at midnight for McCart's release. Mwah. Bye.